everyone. Uh, today, it's my great pleasure to have with us Dr. Giovanna Fogli. Giovanna Fogli is lecturer in CORE, in the School of Humanities, and uh, she joined UCI about 20 years ago. Prior to that, she studied philosophy in Italy, and then uh, she did a PhD at here in Italian literature. And so today, Giovanna is going to show us how to make the perfect pizza. So Giovanna, uh, take it away. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make uh, Giovanna's pizza. So we are going to start uh, with uh, um, proofing the yeast. We're getting the yeast uh, to come back to life. This bowl that you see here has been has followed me since my graduate school days. So we're talking many years and I love it because uh, I instead of having the fountain I'll do everything in here so I'm going to be showing you that I will be um, you need uh, you need warm water I wouldn't say necessarily um, boiling water <laughs> but uh, warm enough that it's comfortable and uh, we are going uh, Okay, we are going to be using today, we're going to make four cups, a four cups pizza. Uh, I have to be honest with you, I never measure when I make pizza, I just make it. But for you, I took the time to do that. So we are going to start uh, with uh, um, three-fourths of a cup of uh, uh, um, warm water. We are going to be adding a generous teaspoon of dry yeast and I'm going to show you this is the kind of dry yeast of course you don't have to buy it in industrial pr proportion you can find uh, <laughs> uh, small packets but that's the yeast and uh, so that the yeast can come alive you need sugar now there are lots of theories on uh, how to uh, revive yeast people use maple syrup they use honey they use I just go with sugar, simple sugar, and I, as you can see, not even a, not even a, a teaspoon, but uh, it does do the trick. Then I'm just gonna move it like this, and I'm gonna leave it alone. So, to um, while the yeast comes back to life, I'm going to show you how I prepare the veggies that I put on top of the pizza. Now. Making pizza in a, in a, in a uh, domestic oven, it's a bit of a trick because the heat is never right enough. If you're not careful and you top your pizza with veggies, they're going to release water and it's going to be a royal mess. So, this is how I prepare my mushroom. I slice them, just a little, a little bit of, uh, of uh, uh, salt and then I put them in my 400 degrees warm up oven. I get a little fancier with the peppers, I slice them, I put some minced garlic, a little bit of mm -hmm. olive oil, play with my hands and then they also go in the oven. You'll notice that I use uh, parchment paper. I am now in love with parchment paper because it really makes uh, uh, roasting veggies absolutely incredible. Okay, so they are going in here and uh, Usually 15 minutes is enough. You don't really want to overcook them. You want the water to, uh, to get out. Okay, this is still coming to life. So I want to show you something. How long does it take to have it come back to life? Well, usually between like, a, I don't know if you can see, but it's already kind of mini bubbling. Mm -hmm. um, 10 minutes, you need to give it 10 minutes because it needs, you know, and uh, don't hurry this step because uh, the more this, the, the more the yeast is alive, uh, the better and fluffier your dough is going to be. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back here. Now, as that goes, uh, I want to show you uh, that I've actually prepared this wow. is the dough. <laughs> at the end, okay? Uh, in, uh, after we started our dough, 
I'm going to be showing you that what I do when I make pizza, I actually cut this and I make little balls so that each one of them can be a little pizza. It's easier to spread, to spread it around. Okay, in fact, why don't we do that now? Should we yes. do that now? Absolutely. Well, I wait and the as we wait for the yeast to come back to life. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to move the yeast right here. And we're going to do this. Now, Maybe the yeast is a bit in too, too, too close to the camera. So we, if we can oh, move okay. it. Some, yeah, perfect. Sorry. Okay. I, uh, for, for some reason, I prefer not to use... I think you can cut with a knife, but a long time ago I was told not to use knives on dough. So that's what I do, okay? So in fact, this is what usually people do. You take yes. it and you cut it. And with then, your hands. And then you go like this again, right? Yes. So one, three, okay. And... Uh, One, two, okay. Then what I do, I form little balls. You might, if you use, if it's too sticky, you just do this. You put a little bit of flour, right, on top, so it doesn't stick to your hands. But, so, okay. Now, what happens, uh, Rocky, please cooperate. What happens is that in this fashion, you will have your dough. You see how nice and elastic it is? Mm -hmm. Your dough is going to actually uh, be come to life again, you know, double, triple. And so that gives the nice uh, texture. Okay, now we're gonna put this, these babies to sleep again. Okay. See, this doesn't like to be moved too much. So. <laughs> Is it upset now since it has been moved? See, it's a little bit, it's, it's not <laughs> <laughs> you know, a funny thing about my making pizza, this is not something that was done in my family at all. I come from northern Italy, and so my tradition was more uh, tagliatelle fatte in casa, lasagne, gnocchi, which I also make. Um, I know, so I know. <laughs> more, more of that. I started making pizza out of sheer desperation when I came to the States in 87. In 1987, <laughs> the American pizza is not absolutely fantastic, but as my children say, it's a different thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's a different product. So I started doing it on my own. And that's when, by the way, that's pretty much when I acquired this. I'm not kidding. And, uh, um, and then it became something that people enjoy, and I like to make it. And so now I also make my, some of my students... Uh, uh, not now because we're all confined, but when we're not confined, I have a little bit of a tradition. To me, final season starts with focaccia. I make focaccia and I take it to, to class for when we do a, re, a review, so it's a reward for those people who show up. And it really <laughs> has become kind of a tradition now. I think that we should actually start with this. So I put three-fourths of a cup before. Yes. I'm now going to put... Uh, almost an entire cup in. And I'll tell you why. Um, it's very important that you put as much water as you wanna, as you wanna have in your dough at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because actually, if you try to add it as you're making the dough, you end up with a sticky mess. Also, a, a wetter dough makes for a lighter and fluffier pizza. So it depends on what, what you like. Uh, okay. So, uh, there it is. Uh, okay. So, I'm adding water. Okay. 
I then add a generous, let's say one tablespoon of olive oil. Mm -hmm. As you see, I'm cheating. This is more than one tablespoon. <laughs> yes. You know, you really have, you have to decide not too much because then it really gets. Uh, and now something that used really to scare me when I started a long time ago, I, I have to put salt. Yes. And you put the salt, uh, sugar makes the dough alive. So in my silly non-chemical knowledge, I was afraid the salt would kill it, but it doesn't. So, <laughs> <isn't> that, uh, <laughs> Well, you know, I had a very binary mind. <laughs> Just, uh, um, don't put too much salt because the toppings are really going to do the thing. But you do want to have some salt unless you like very, uh, you know, uh, unsavory things. Okay. And now we're starting. Uh, I'm going to show you that I cheat a little bit. But you know what? I don't care. I've done it for more years than I like to remember. So... This is my small thing of flour that I have here for, you know. <laughs> Just to make sure that you don't run out of stock. <laughs> now, I add flour a bit at a time. Right? Yes. Because if you do it all together, you get with a clump of thing and it's really going to be difficult. So let's start with a cup. Okay? Perfect. A cup of flour and then you go. And go. And go. Now, if you look up recipes for pizza, I'm mm -hmm. sure you'll find the other method, which is big fountain in, in, in water in the middle. Um, I actually never understood why making your life so difficult. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Second cup of flour. And I'm still using the spoon because... Uh, it's watery. Yeah. You can hear the squish, squish, squish. Yes. The nice thing about this is that you can also vary the, the amount of flour, right? I mean, if you put a little bit too much water, not a problem. You'll just uh, add a little bit more. Like probably this time there was a little bit too much water. Let's what see. kind of flour are you using? Okay. Do you <laughs> The theory is that the best flour for pizza is the uh, so-called zero zero, which simply is white flour refined twice, uh, and it is uh, um, I'm told made with uh, uh, younger kind of grain. Um, you really can find that here. I you know cake cake flour comes close to it, but the reality is that. Any flour, any, you know, all-purpose flour is good. It's better, I like the unbleached, just because I think it's just psychological. Yeah, the idea of my flour being bleached <laughs> doesn't fly, but, uh, but any kind of flour. In fact, if you are so inclined, you can even put some uh, um, whole wheat flour. Uh, of course, be careful, because whole wheat flour makes it very hard, okay? Yes. Okay, we're starting. You see why I love my bowl? Yeah, and, and then, then you don't have all the flour around, so you <laughs> don't have a mess in your kitchen. Okay, uh, I think we're going to have to go probably for more than four cups here. Yeah, because if I can still do this, well, we'll see. You see? Yes. Okay. Flour in my hand to clean the spoon. Perfect. And now, hands. As so I said, when it's solid enough that you can hold it in your hands, you... At this point, um, yes, but I have to tell you, this is going to be a five cups. Yeah, that's also... Production because... Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Something that we like to remind people that are watching these videos is that, you know, we give suggestions as to how to prepare various dishes, but then, you know, anything can change as you are making them Absolutely. and you have to be ready to adjust 
and go with the flow. <laughs> exactly. Look. Wow. Okay, so the way that I like to work this, it's fall, go around. Fall, mm -hmm. go around. But everybody does whatever. Um, for people who have never done any kind of dog, the first time you put your hands in this, you want to cry because you don't think you're ever going to get rid of it. And that's not true because this really becomes smooth and soft. Now, pizza dough doesn't need to be overly worked. It's not like bread, okay? So, okay. Then I get tired, so I go with the other one. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, I confess that I like to keep it a little sticky because if it's a little bit, tiny bit sticky, it means that it's on the wetter side and I get uh, a softer, but also cruncher on the outside kind of pizza. I love pizza. Oh, yeah. That's one of the problems. I eat a lot of pizza. Okay, here it is. Wow, perfect. And as you can see, okay, I can already bounce it. Okay, and then we'll put it a riposare. It has to rest a little bit. <laughs> How long? Um, usually, I give it at least an hour and a half. And then I'll do what I'm gonna show you. What I did, did the, uh, after an hour and a half, I cut it, and then I give it another half an hour. Um, so that when I go in to make the pizza, it's grown, um, it's uh, grown again. Sorry, I'm just washing my hands. I, because after all these years, the flour does bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? Okay. So now this baby is going to go to sleep. We're going to put. It's a good idea to put a um, kitchen towel on top. Keeps it better. Okay. Now let's take a look. Hold a moment. Um, Mira. Okay, look. This will be okay. See? See how the the mushroom it's uh, it's a little bit uh, uh yeah. so I'm gonna leave it in here just for a moment. I wanna see what the Okay. I like to okay see I think they're ready but I'm gonna return them to the oven just for five minutes uh, as I okay so now we have to talk about cooking the pizza yes <laughs> um, for years and years and years I use my oven and then I was given this thing here which I'm going to show you. This is called La Petite Pizzeria. I don't know why French, because honestly, but anyway. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to cook it here just because it's going to, it's much, it's uh, much quicker. It only takes five to six minutes. And you can uh, see how one pizza comes. But I will tell you how to cook it in the oven. And uh, um, the, um, the temperature you should you should use and how much and how long the pizza should be in there. Um, people like to use pizza stones sometimes. The problem with pizza stone in the oven is that uh, to me, because <laughs> ideally you should warm the pizza stone before you put the pizza on top, and then it gets tricky because you need to be unless you are amazingly good with this. <laughs> You know, it can be a little bit of a problem. Okay. <laughs> but you have the tools, just in case. Oh my gosh, yes, I have the tools, I have the tools. Okay, 
Okay, so um, uh, should we? I need to turn on this. So we are going to be having. So La Petite Pizzeria uh, is an electric oven, basically, yes. right? It's an electric oven. Uh, I'm crazy. I own two. But, <laughs> but actually, I can also show you. Uh, actually, I have the oven on. So maybe we can just also, I can also show you how it comes in the oven. It's just that it takes longer. It takes 25 minutes. So, you know, for the time. Okay, let me, let me show you what, uh, what I put on top of the pizza. Let's talk about the most the, the second most important thing after the dough and that is the sauce right okay now um people have all kinds of taste about pizza sauce my pizza sauce it's the simplest thing uh, ever in fact it is not a cooked sauce i um it has only four ingredients five sometimes and it is made out of uh, diced usually organic tomatoes if i were in italy i would probably use what we call the pomodori san marzano um, but uh, here i'm really happy with this i i, li I like this this, this uh, the the sw brand they're actually really nice and what i do I use a, a, um, a blender, okay? Yes. So, blender, <clears throat> one, actually, I'm going to put, I'm going to put more than one, because we're going to need more than one. A <laughs> generous people, quantity. Gonna, people are going to eat this pizza later, and so, <laughs> this pizza will be dispatched. Because <laughs> we need all things are going to be, Okay, so let's say two of these. Okay. To which I add uh, minced garlic, right? And let's say for this, uh, uh, probably, let's say a teaspoon of, of my, pretty much we don't want to exaggerate and uh, uh, of course uh, we are going to add salt again uh, uh, the equivalent of half a teaspoon and uh, so i like to put a little bit of red pepper yes a pinch right a pinch. So, a pinch just you know to give it a little bit of taste um, oregano, this is uh, the last of some Greek oregano that I was given. Now, um, okay, on this there are two schools of thoughts. In Tuscany, and that's pretty much, I guess, where I, part of my culinary background comes, the oregano is, for some reason, the oregano is the one. Um, Naples, I think, loves more fresh basil right so yes we'll, uh, uh, you you'll need to decide uh, which school you belong to so, yeah this it's very good oregano so i'll still go with this the last thing that we're going to put in here is some olive oil and here i'm generous okay i don't i just give it a few seconds because i don't want to be pureed I just want to cut those little uh, diced tomatoes a little bit more, okay? So, that's it. And I'll show you the consistency. Wow. See, you can still see the pieces, but they are cut down. Okay? Okay. And now, um, takes a little bit. Um, so let me show you, as I said, what I'm going to put uh, uh, possible toppings for our, for our pizza. Um, Okay, so I 
really love onions, red onions. For some reason, I think the red onions is the one uh, that really goes. See, simple red onion. Um, we are now going to be rescuing uh, our mushrooms. Uh, Okay, the great thing about pizza, now COVID uh, is not allowed you have to do it, but it is a great thing to cook together with friends. Traditionally, I make the dough earlier, but the topping, people tell you what they want, uh, um, you just eat until you can't take it anymore. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is really um, a social event. Event, yes. As we call it in Italy, la pizzata. So, pizzata, yes. until you can't take it in anymore. Even though I have to say, in Italy, there are so many places where you can get amazing pizza, that you end up buying the pizza most of the time. Um, Although I have to say, at least in Bologna, where I yeah. typically go back, um, it's not that easy to find great pizza. Oh, I see. Well, you know, so... Also, something that uh, for Americans, ouch, for Americans might be a little difficult to imagine is that we have so many different pizzas. Like we have the two main schools, right? Actually, the three schools of pizza. We have the, of course, Neapolitan pizza, which uh, uh, legend or tradition says uh, was born from a rather um, poor dish. So basically, um, just like you know, just like tortillas or pitas, pizza was a base, and uh, um, uh, fishermen would put would put uh, fish on it. And pizza, as we know it now, with uh, we're gonna make that traditional with the tomato sauce, mozzarella, and the basil on top, called margherita in Italian. It was actually made in honor of uh, um, Queen Margherita. So it was a chef that, that's, that's the myth, created this. Uh, Napolitans are very proud of their pizza. And uh, you should also know that the dough that you find in Naples uh, is made, I think, in a different way. They actually have a different process, so they keep uh, the, uh, the starter, the mother, we call it in Italian. And so rather than just being two hours uh, uh, of uh, uh, rising time is actually 12 hours. And sometimes I think that before dying, I'm gonna try that <laughs> to make my own starter. Um, the other, so one is a Napolitan, and Napolitan pizza is uh, crunchy on the outside, but really soft um, all over. Then there is the Roman pizza. Roman pizza is as thin as it can be. Uh, and uh, usually re really, really large, but the third kind of pizza is a Tuscan pizza. Uh, in Tuscany mm -hmm. pizza, uh, you can find it in uh, cooked in, as, I would say it's like the grandma of the Chicago pizza. So little containers, uh, uh, little um, cook she cook uh, cookie sheets with the pizza that can be this, this high. Um, and it's usually, mm, I don't think it requires the same kind of, uh, of uh, process that, for example, the Napolitan requires. So we have many kinds. So in Bologna, you don't have good, good pizza? Come on, really? Uh, no, you, you can find some, uh, some good pizzeria, but you have to know where to look for them. Yes, of uh, course. Of you course. can't just walk into the first one on the street. and. Oh, well, that is actually true, even in Naples, I think. Even though they, of course, they'll... Uh, They'll deny that. I remember my first pizza in Naples, I was 17 years old, and uh, it was for a political rally, so we're talking <laughs> the days. <laughs> and I remember uh, this little hole in the wall in this place, and uh, uh, the, the gentleman comes to the table and asks, uh, what do you want? And I say, oh, I like a Napolitan. Because see, in Turing, the Napolitan pizza is the pizza that has uh, anchovies and 
And the guy looks at me and goes, I'm going to tell you in Italian and then, and then I'll translate. A signori, ca tutta napolitana stanno. Which meant, girl, they're all Napolitan here. <laughs> and I will forever, that to me will be, it kind of symbolizes the Napolitan love for pizza, the, you know, that, that spirit. Okay, so let me show you. Now, great thing about pizza, you can put whatever you want on top of it. It could be traditional with the tomato sauce and the cheese, but also, and lots of people like that, you don't have to put it, not even what they call white sauce, just go with your dough. I just made it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, just the dough, prosciutto, um, um, asparagus co cooked with the pizza, uh, and then prosciutto, fresh prosciutto on top of it. Or, or salmon, smoked salmon on top of it. Amazing. Thanks, man. Or uh, you can put, you know, all kinds of meat on top. Um, I will show you, so traditional pizza, and I will show you how we're going to do it, is usually tomato sauce, mozzarella. Then my children, and all the children in the world, well, all the children who can eat pork in the world, love pepperoni. Uh, you don't have to use the pork pepperoni, there also there is quite a very good uh, kind of turkey pepperoni, so if you want to use that. A pizza that is traditional, uh, at least I grew up with that, uh, um, it's the prosciutto e funghi. Yes. And uh, uh, the one that I really like though, it's uh, as anchovies, <laughs> capers, and why not, onions too. And this one takes a little bit. Oh, and garlic, I forgot. Okay, uh, we also have here peppers. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are eggplants. These eggplants were prepared just like I did the peppers. So cut, put in the oven. Okay, so this is what we have here. And uh, why don't we prepare one, okay? So let's take one of these. Okay, as you can see, I'll start moving like this. Um, now, two school of thoughts here as well. If you want to make it very, 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 very thin, you could use a rolling pin. But see, the rolling pin doesn't allow those pockets of uh, soft and crunchy that I think are, are so good when you make pizza. So I prefer to do this, to kind of work a little bit. I'm not going to throw it in the air, so don't even think about that because I've never learned. And I think it's just showing off, and I don't see the point. You know, it's undignified. No, honestly, I think that I would, it would just fall on my face. So, really, <laughs> so it gets bigger and bigger. Okay. Okay, now, the thinner it is. the quicker is going to cook, okay? Yeah. So if you like thick, that's fine. Just consider that it's gonna take more time. Now, if you cook it in the oven, uh, you can even just use a cookie sheet, not a problem. Uh, just have the, um, do not use parchment paper with pizza. It's a no-no, it does not come out well. Still have to find out why, but it doesn't. Uh, because of course I tried. Um, so just wet your hands with olive oil and pass it, you know, just uh, on the on the cookie sheet, and that's it. You, it doesn't really have to be um, more than that. Uh, okay. And what kind of temperature do you recommend if you cook it in the oven? I put it up to to four four twenty five four thirty, and when I put the pizza in, I lower it to four fifteen. And then I look. Now, one thing that I do, though, you see, I don't put the cheese together with the other ingredients because uh, um, I like the cheese to be not crusty, <laughs> but still be melting. Um, and note about the cheese. So this is low moisture mozzarella. Um, but, and so you don't have to worry about it. It's already low moisture and you can, I thought that for the purpose is probably better. I like to use fresh mozzarella, but 
When I use French mozzarella, I actually squeeze it in my, with my hand very, very much. Okay? Yes. So that you can get all the possible, because that mozzarella is going to just wet your pizza completely. Okay? Uh, okay, now, um, so here's the thing. You can't see, can you see this? No. Yes, yes, we can, can you, see it. I can, I can, you can leave it there, yeah. Because this is what I do. Okay, I actually work there with this. So it's now hot as I want it. So how are we gonna make this one? Simple or should we put a, put a little bit of pepperoni on top? Whatever you prefer. Actually, why don't we start with a traditional Napoli margherita or napolitana? Napoli 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 okay, so. What I'm going to need is uh, the tomato sauce, the, um, the capers, I mean the, um, the anchovies, a little bit of garlic, and uh, I really love capers. No, but it's Napoletana, so no capers. Okay, so what I'm doing is, I put it directly on, of course, I'm gonna show you how to make one in the oven though, because otherwise, uh, it doesn't really make much sense. Then I spread some of this. <coughs> I don't overdo it because, I, but I make sure that it's all over. Okay. And then I put uh, a few anchovies, a little bit of garlic. and I close it. And then uh, three minutes before it's ready, I'll add the cheese. I'm gonna show you also how to do it in the oven. Um, so I'm going to actually, yes. So let's say we are going to be using, uh, well, you know what? We're gonna be using this little thing here which is, see, it's just the bottom of a, uh, of a, um, of a pie maker. So, start with this again. It's very elastic. Yes. Yes. Okay, I am going to put this time, as I said, I, I need a little bit of olive oil to wet this, otherwise it'll stuck. Make sure that it's all nicely. Which also okay. makes it easier to, to do this. Then, because it's, uh, this is actually nice because it's a perfect size. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and then we are going to be putting some tomato. And okay, let's go creative with this. What should we put on? Can you move the tomato because yeah. it's in front of the camera? Thanks. Sorry. Okay, so how about we go veggies with this? Yes. So um, we're going to go with a little bit of mushroom. A little bit of peppers. We'll top it with onions. And I think we're done. Ah, I love eggplants. Yeah. Perfect veggie pizza. This is a perfect veggie pizza. By the way, if you are lactose intolerant, you don't like cheese, it's also amazing like this, okay? So, I am going to be putting it in. Sorry, I have an old oven. Um, and we are going to be setting a timer. 
Okay, given that it's such a small pizza, I'm going to just set the timer for 15 minutes. That's another thing that it's very important uh, uh, with, um, with pizza. It really depends on the size. If you make a small one, it's going to take uh, much less, of course. So give me, I'm gonna wash my hands, and then I'm gonna look at what's happening. In this neck of the wood, Oh, nice. <laughs> so, um, what else? The other thing about pizza is that it's very cheap. Yes. So I realize that in a college dorm it might be difficult to do this. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but surely the first time you have an apartment with your friends, you can do it. <laughs> it's really um, a satisfying thing to do. And... Uh, um, it doesn't really take that much time. Yeah, um, you can leave the, the dough grow or the yeast uh, revive, <laughs> come back to life by itself. I say, yeah, um, I make pizza. A good thing about this dough, you can freeze it. And when ah. you frost it, it comes back to life. I mean, it rises again. And I guess that that's because it is done with uh, dry yeast. If you do it, as I said before, with the start, the traditional mother, I don't think it's going to do the same. But the dry yeast clearly has a kick in it, mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, never stops. Okay, um, so now I like where the pizza is, therefore I'm going to put some cheese on top of it. Okay, and now I'll give it another couple of minutes and we'll see what happens. Uh, do you want to bake and uh, prepare another one? Maybe um, something Let's with do meat? another one. Time around. Let's prepare a pepperoni one. And that's, my son is going to be sad. sorry not to be here today. <laughs> yeah. I, cooking is a very important part, I think, of existence. So let's put uh, some tomatoes. Again. And then, uh, what do we say we're gonna do, pepperoni? Yes. Pepperoni, pepperoni, it's a love, the love of, I actually like, uh, in Italian, you know that we don't have pepperoni. I know. And so, uh, yeah, but I mean, the confusion in my mind when I came. I came to this country in 87. I did not speak one word of English. I'll tell you, it was really interesting, okay? So, being asked if I wanted pepperoni, of course, as an Italian, I expected peppers. And when I saw this thing coming, oh boy, that was a little bit shocking. <laughs> um, <laughs> Close friends, yeah. Re oh, yes. The cognates and not, co not cognates. Okay. Let's see this baby here. Oh, it's almost ready. Let's give it one more second. And then we're going to put it on a plate. And here it is. Wow. If I put it here, can you still see it? No. Yeah, that's perfect. If you put it on the flower, it's perfect. Yeah. Okay, right there. And uh, see, that's what I was saying. Yeah, I see why well, you prefer to do it next to the pizza maker. I think I can still do it, but... Yeah, it's not as convenient. <laughs> okay, let's make another one. This time we're going to make it... Uh, um, with a mushroom and uh, um, ham. Ham, I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking about the Quattro Stagioni. Oh, yes, that is I an Italian favorite. It's called Quattro Stagioni, four seasons, but uh, in some places they put artichokes in it. Yes. In other places, uh, it's actually. Uh, 
So we could put the peppers instead of the artichoke. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't have the, the artichokes. Well, I have the artichokes the frozen, so it'll take a little bit of time. Not, not this time around, maybe next not time. Not this time around. No, 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 no. No, not this time around. Okay. Okay. The other thing that I noticed, because of course um, my mom is a great cook and yes. she makes pizza. I don't. Um, I'm not very good at baking. Uh, I think, you know, people need a special talent sometimes to, because baking is, is a bit tricky, let's, let's face well, yeah, it. Yeah, because sometimes the silliest thing, can, well, I think it's a matter of, uh, it's a muscle memory, I'm not kidding. Uh, you do it so many times uh, and it kind of stays with you, right? You, you uh, like every time people say, oh, pizza, my, to me it's the easiest thing in the world. Um, but just like for our mothers, making pasta for ten casas, you know. Yeah. For, Again. Me, for me, I have to say I do it, but it's still a production, right? Because, you know. And I remember my mother was like, and she didn't have, I mean, she would do the pasta with the rolling pins. So, um, but I do believe it's a muscle memory thing. I just decided that I'm going to do one thing though, it is. Yeah, that is also something that we have seen already in other videos, namely the fact that cooking is more a form of know-how rather than know that. Of course, we give yeah. indications, suggestions tips about how to do things but really comes with practice and then exactly. it's, it's kind of embodied cognition at some point you know when it's ready because I said, you have it seen it. Muscle memory almost. I, yeah. really I have to say I love cooking of course um, I'm not good at following recipes because what I like about cooking is the creativity and recipes are sometimes really stifling um, so I, my kids say that I can never follow a recipe down to the end, which is true. I always, there's a moment in which I'm going, I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, which is probably why I don't make cakes that much because with pastry, either you go or, you know, you, you can't really take shortcuts. Um, but it is an amazing form of expression. Uh, I thought it was interesting that in these times of COVID, all of a sudden, everybody wanted to make bread. Yes. It was like, which is, I mean, think about it. We all say that we don't like to eat carbs. And the first thing that people want to make is bread. So there must be some kind of, uh, um, so I'm putting some uh, uh, prosciutto. And I'm well, going to do the way that they do it in Italy, here. In, in, ter uh, in terms, we're going to put some olives. Yes, that's perfect. Here, like so there. I was saying that I noticed that you make a relatively small pizzas and then you vary them a lot. My mom at home used to make it sort of bigger uh, pizzas and then um, not so much of a variety. But I think that yours are better than my mom's. I've tried no, it. You know, I know, I know <laughs> from I like experience. Pizza, like, uh, you know that because you had my pizza. When, when people come to my house, I like to make pizza. I like every pizza to be different. Yes. I mean, the only exception is, uh, of course, children. Children are very conservative, right? Yes. And, uh, and because they are so conservative, uh, with them you've got to be very careful because... Uh, you know, they only want certain things. Yes. But uh, um, but I like to be, you know, things have to be different. And uh, okay, how are you doing? And I can assure you, guys, that are what you are watching this video now, that Giovanna's pizza is great. Doesn't matter what she puts on top of it; it's always fantastic. And it's a great pleasure to just taste a little bit of all this variety of amazing pizzas. It is, uh, you know, the, well, it's like, you know, it's maybe the same reason that I like gnocchi. I like gnocchi because I usually prepare four, five, six different dressing to put on top of it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but 
Never. It's a gnocchi feast. Maybe next oh, time yeah. we'll do gnocchi. Time, the last time we made gnocchi, it really was uh, overwhelming. There were flour all over the place. <laughs> As you can see, I don't have a gigantic kitchen, but okay. Okay, now this one. This is the pepperoni one. So it's uh Ah it's already I have to put it here though. Ready, yeah it's okay, no yeah. worries. And uh okay. <laughs> okay. Okay then. And then, you know, uh, I arrived here in the state, on this side of the state, <laughs> on the West Coast, um, a little over four years ago, I believe. And to this day, I haven't tried to make bread yet. Whereas when I was in Italy, I was making bread every day. Oh, but yeah. I had a very simple recipe with live yeast. And um, I was making it in the with a with a bread maker machine. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would make my own bread almost every day. Um, I had my my flowers and and here I haven't been able to um, find the, the ingredients that I know how to make bread with. So I haven't been make I haven't been making bread since I've arrived. Which is a bit of a concern because it's difficult to find nice bread, I believe. Yeah, yeah, right. I have to say, um, I, I as well have not really, uh, I'm surprised, I love bread. And it's not always easy to find good bread here, right? But for some reason, I keep saying to myself that, uh, um, that one day, I will make my starter, you know, my, my, my madre, mm -hmm. and somehow uh, it never worked. I, I would have done it in this COVID experience, but for a long time, flour disappeared. It was like buying gold. <laughs> <laughs> one day somebody's going to have to explain to me this weird uh, psychological trap of people that decide that Toilet paper and flour are the two things that we need. <laughs> it's just really, uh, it's uh, some kind of, um, I can't wrap my mind around that, right? Okay, this one, I like to make it with all the Mediterranean things. So we're going to put a little bit of anchovies. Oh, yes, I'm coming, baby. That's the oven? Yes, for the one that we put in there. Oh, Rocky, okay, no, it's nobody. That's my pit bull. Yes, Giovanna is a Happy wonderful day. pit bull called Rocky. And Rocky olives. maybe wants to be part of the video. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky is very stressed out these days. Uh, you know, I teach online and so I have... And when he hears me talking... Uh, um, some reason. So this one had anchovies, capers, uh, um, olives, a little bit of, uh, of red onions, uh, and just for the sake of it, and because Italy is Italy, we we'll put a little bit of garlic on top. And now we we'll have to wait. Oh yes, we have the one in the oven, huh? It's always a good idea to have a little bit of garlic. Yes. Particularly now that we are social distancing, we don't have to worry about that. And, uh, we can just be... So this Generous. one that we made in the oven, as you can see, it's, uh, it's, it's the same, it's perfectly, uh, maybe that method lets uh, imitate the pizzeria a little bit more, but this is the same, look. This is the one that we made with all the veggies. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to put that, I'm sorry, I'm going to come around here, this is going to be put here too. I'll tilt the computer <laughs> before the end so that we can look at all of them, right? Okay. And this. And we are waiting now 
for this one to be ooh i like that it's soft because see, if you don't if you don't uh, and it's a, it's a matter of taste uh, sometimes I do like to have a little bit more of a bready situation. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, cheese. Definitely a tip that we can take home uh, from this wonderful demonstration of how to make pizza is to add the cheese, the mozzarella, um, around, you know, towards the end of the cooking time for the pizza which is something that I didn't know. I, I've always put pizza, imme uh, sorry, um, mozzarella yeah. immediately uh, with the sauce and, and the topping. Maybe it's sometimes... It's a little crunchy. Mm -hmm. too, and, uh, um, and therefore not exactly... Um, okay, so we're just waiting for this. Um, we are good. That's pizza. <laughs> That's the pizza party, so... Yes, pizza um, party, I can tell you guys uh, tasted it um, because I have to confess, the best thing for me is when I see people eating something I make and there is that moment uh, that's no word or compliments. You just see, mm, yes, I nailed it. That to me is the great thing about cooking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this is... See? How thicker this is. Yeah. And uh, um, it's our last one. So we're going to put it here too. And here it is. Wonderful. So it is a. Yes, Rocky, not for you. Sorry. So that was the four season. This is the first season, exactly. So not with things one on top of the other. The first season is different because as you can see, they're in separate quarters, right? Yeah. So veggies don't, don't overlap with each other. Okay, and uh, I will now cook this one. Rocky, I think Rocky is starting to feel Ignored. Uh -oh. Like a baby. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's okay. This one is a bit of a problem. Let's try with another thing. <laughs> uh, what? I have way many, too many of these. That's fantastic. But this is why. Oh, that's genius. <laughs> yeah, it's genius, but this is part. Okay. See? <laughs> wow. <Well>, go. <laughs> bravo, bravo, Giovanna. So thank you so much for this. Thank you for. Uh, for uh, I mean, come and see this. I'm going to turn the computer so you can see the pizzas. Yes. Wow. Guys, this is really a pizza feast, a pizza party. It's a shame that we can't be there with you to enjoy the pizza, but we'll soon, oh, hopefully, wow. resume <laughs> in-person in eating. <laughs> okay. So... Everybody, I hope you enjoyed this one. Goodbye and enjoy. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.